Hello, Pewter people. Scott Reynolds here with another Pewter Pulse. What's been the biggest problem area on the Bucks' terrible defense this year? It's been inside linebacker, where Father Time is catching up to 34-year-old Levante David. Servasier Dennis is out for the year following shoulder surgery, and K.J. Britt has just been downright awful. As bad as it's been at inside linebacker this year, it might be just as bad next year, perhaps even worse. I'll explain why in just a moment. But first, a reminder to hit the thumbs up button. Give us a like. Also, leave a comment doing those two things. It helps us with the old YouTube algorithm. Gets us in front of more awesome Bucks fans like you. Okay, so let's talk about the future of the inside linebacker position in Tampa Bay. And it might look a little bleak in 2025 and beyond. Pro Football Focus has its flaws when grading players, so take it with a grain of salt, but Servassier Dennis finished the year as the highest graded Bucks linebacker. He's also the 50th highest graded linebacker in the entire league with the 67.3 overall grade. His 74.3 coverage grade is also the best among Tampa Bay linebackers this year by a mile. Dennis started the season platooning with K.J. Britt, coming in on third downs and obvious passing downs, and he was on track to unseat Britt as the full-time starter before a shoulder injury flared up in week four and cost him the rest of the year. Who knew that losing Servassier Dennis would just suck the life out of the Bucks' defense? Speaking of suck, Britt has the worst coverage grade on this team, according to Pro Football Focus, at 37.6. Yet for weeks, head coach and defensive play caller Todd Bowles didn't try platooning J.J. Russell or promoting Vi Jones from the practice squad until recently. Anything would have been better than playing Britain coverage because he's the slowest and least athletic linebacker on the team. In case you're wondering about former Bucks linebacker Devin White, he's ranked number 157 out of all the linebackers this year by Pro Football Focus. Sure, Todd Bowles wanted him back after Dennis's injury, but Jason Light said no, and rightfully so. The Eagles found out quickly this offseason that White was terrible. He never played a down in Philly and was a healthy scratch most of the time he was there. After a few weeks on the street, White was picked up by Houston, where he's played just 54 snaps, and he has an overall grade of 29.9 by Pro Football Focus. That's 14 points lower than K.J. Britt. While Britt's coverage grade is an awful 37.6, White has a coverage grade of just 30. So re-signing White would not have helped the Bucs. All you Devin White fans have just got to let it go. He is not the same player he was in 2019 and 2020. He's awful. Accept it. Dennis's season-ending injury coinciding with Levante David's decline this year has not been great timing. David is PFF's 64-ranked linebacker with a 64.7 overall grade and a woeful 55.8 coverage grade, and that's a career low. David has a or David had a 72.3 grade last year and a 68.6 coverage grade, so he was worth re-signing even at age 34. But this year, David has surrendered a team-worst 491 receiving yards at a career-worst rate of 10 yards per catch. That's, that's a first down every time Levante David covers somebody. In addition, he has allowed a career-worst completion percentage rate of 86%. <sighs> to make matters worse, David turns 35 in January, and he might be done. He, along with Britt, are free agents in 2025. I don't think Britt returns next year. And if David returns, it's going to have to be for a much smaller salary than the $8.5 million he's making this year. And it could depend on what happens with Todd Bowles. If Bowles is fired, David may just want to retire. Or if a new head coach comes in, he might want to turn the page on an aging linebacker who has passed his prime. But... What does that leave? Well, it leaves the Bucks in a precarious position moving forward at linebacker. The only Bucks linebacker under contract in 2025 is Dennis, and he's had some injury issues. J.J. Russell will be 
a restricted free agent. And Antonio Greer, the rookie, will be an exclusive rights free agent. So the team may have some say-so in whether those players will be back or not. Tampa Bay is high on practice squad linebacker Vi Jones. He's the best athlete of the bunch, running a 4-5-1 out of North Carolina State. He's six foot three, 230 pounds. He's got good size and range. By comparison, Greer is also a pretty good athlete, but he ran a 4-6-3 coming out of college. Dennis ran a 4-6-4. Levante David back in the day out of Nebraska ran a 4-6-5. But Russell ran a 4-7, and Britt ran a 4-7-6. But it's not just about speed and finding fast linebackers. Devin White ran a 4-4-2 coming out of LSU, and former practice squad linebacker Kalen Deloach, well, he was just too undersized. But he ran a 4-4-7 out of Florida State. But it's more than just speed. you, you got to be able to shed blocks, read your keys, cover. you got to be able to play linebacker. But there's no doubt that the Bucs are in need of a good linebacker with sideline to sideline speed. Maybe that's Dennis, but they need somebody else for sure. Now, you can criticize Jason Light all you want about not signing a linebacker in free agency. But keep in mind that Bowles insisted that his guy, K.J. Britt, was going to start next to Levante David, especially with Britt being in a contract year. And both Light and Bowles thought highly of Servassier Dennis, who was a fifth-round pick last year. And with good reason. I think Servassier Dennis is a good player when healthy. Suspending big money on a free agent linebacker was not in the cards last offseason. Light was not going to spend money on a linebacker It was going to be buried at number four on the depth chart. And no free agent is going to want to sign with Tampa Bay without the chance to start. So the Bucs might enter free agency next March with just Servassier Dennis, Vi Jones, Antonio Greer, and possibly J.J. Russell at linebacker. And the free agent class at linebacker is decent, but not great. San Francisco's Dre Greenlaw, who's missed the entire 2024 season with an injury, is only 27, and he might hit free agency, although it's going to cost a pretty penny to get him. He's making over $8 million right now. Kansas City's Nick Bolton is 25, and he's slated for for free agency, but will Kansas City let him go? And Philly's Zach Bond, who's really good in coverage, is also another option, and there's some others like Miami's Duke Riley. A lot will depend on who's actually running the Bucs defense next year, and what scheme is being deployed. That speaks a lot about Todd Bowles' future. We'll see what happens down the stretch. With the NFL still a pass-first league, finding another coverage linebacker to pair with Dennis is imperative. While there are some intriguing options in free agency, the 2025 draft class is extremely weak at the linebacker position. I was talking with Pewter Report alum and PFF draft guru Trevor Sykema, this week, and there might not be a linebacker drafted in the first round and maybe just five or six selected by the start of day three. That means the prices for those inside linebackers in free agency will likely shoot up due to the lack of supply in the draft, and there will be plenty of competition on the open free agent market that Tampa Bay will have to contend with for those available linebackers. At some point, Bulls needs to start playing the more athletic Vi Jones and Antonio Greer, to see if if this team has some hidden gems at the linebacker position. But he won't because he's too stubborn and too loyal to Britt. It'll be fascinating to see what happens at this super important position next year. Stay tuned to Pewter Report in January and beyond because nobody covers the Bucs free agency and draft like we do. And nobody covers the Bucks, period, like we do. That's why you got to check out Pewter Report TV, our YouTube channel, where there's more Pewter Pulse episodes and more great Bucks video content, like Josh Capo's Bucks All 2022 Breakdowns, our Pewter Pregame Show, our Pewter Report Podcast, Pewter Game Days, all at Pewter Report TV. And make sure you follow us on X, Facebook, and Instagram at Pewter Report and visit pewterreport.com for all your Bucks news. And I'll be back soon with a new Pewter Pulse.